Welcome again to another one of our webinars. Uh, my name is Noel Lachi. I'm the Sales Support Manager here at AAG. Today I'll be looking at our Panel Builder solution, focusing primarily on throughput. We will be running our Panel Builder system as a 5018 system. We'll be talking about our Panel Builder solution, primarily our Pendulum Processing. And what I mean by Pendulum Processing, it allows you to set up multiple sheets on the deck. To make that work seamlessly, it starts at the front end with our Panel Builder software. In the software, I can create my different nests. The software then allows me to take multiple nests and make one job. So I can have job A in the front, job B in the back. The beauty of our system, it also recognizes that you can have different sheet sizes, so it knows where to place the sheets on the deck so the job will be cut correctly. So on this particular job we'll be running, we'll have two sheets. One sheet is 130 inches long. The second one will be 78 inches long. They have the same width, but the width can also vary, and Panel Builder will deal with that correctly. So when we run the job, it will cut the job in the front, and then when it gets to the middle, it will basically stop and pause, waiting for input from the operator to tell it, okay, the system is good to go, move on and cut the back. It will then move and it will cut the back, back sheet. In conjunction with all these things happening, our system already also has automatic features that trigger depending on what's taking place. In the front, if I'm cutting in the front, the vacuum will be on, the alignment pins will be down. In the back, the vacuum will be off, the alignment pins will be up. That way the operator can be loading the back while the front is running. We also have safety systems that will be tied, can be tied into this process. So, Safety mats that will allow the operator to work in the back when you're cutting in the front, and vice versa work in the front. And if you happen to step in a zone that has something taking place, the machine will automatically pause. So the next step is we'll run this job and then we'll discuss it further in terms of what the final result looks like. What we'll discuss today is throughput and efficiency when running panels. Uh, there are a couple of things that we, you know, we realize that, that are very important. I want to maximize my yield on my sheets and I want to increase my throughput. So how many panels can I basically push through this table at any given time? Well, in terms of maximizing yield, that becomes how well do I nest the job? How closely can I place the panels? Um, we've determined if I really want to maximize yield when I'm looking at running composite is using a, a 3 16 inch tool for doing the profile work. Okay? And then using a, a V-bit for doing the full lines. Now, so we have those tools that allow us to do that. So if I look at this layout, and I look at my nest, you can see the gap between my panels, we just find it as being quarter of an inch. So I know the 3 16 inch tool, I can qu quickly and easily get between these panels to cut them out. My inside corner will basically be very small, so I can basically take a minute to hit it with a file and I get a nice tight corner when I fold up the panel. So again, so I picked a tool that allows me to get very close in terms of my panel nesting, and increase, decrease my corner radiuses. Now, what can I do next? Well, the next thing we look at is how fast can I do this? Well, we're running now, uh, usually when we're running at 316s at about 700 inches a minute. And when I'm doing the V routes, we have some new tools we're working on and developing, and we've gotten up to, you know, between 900 to 1,000, looking to increase that even further in terms of how fast we can V route the panels. Again, in an effort to increase the throughput of the machine. Well, so now I have my nest, right? So I've created all my nests to the projects. You know, I brought my panels in, I defined the sheets I wanted to use, different sizes of sheets. Panel Builder will automatically take those sheet sizes and basically determine which is the best layout to, uh, to basically use so we get maximize yield, okay? Panel Builder works on yield, okay? I also have the ability to generate, generate remnants. So like when I run a job and I have an extra piece of material, the system will automatically generate a scrap line so I can get a nice clean rectangular piece, which the software can then save. And at a later date, when I release it into the project, it will actually use that remnant. So, you know, I'm looking at all these different things to really maximize yield. Well, now I'm gonna really, how do I really maximize my throughput? Well. What we'll look at is what we call pendulum. So our standard machine is a 5,018, you know, take a standard sheet, 196 um, and a half by 62 in terms of size. 
well, I'll build a machine that I can put two sheets on with a gap in the middle in terms of a safety zone. Well, okay, great, and load two sheets. Now, I have all these different nets. How do I basically do that? I basically send 100 nets down to the machine and say, okay, I'm gonna run nest one in the front, nest two in the back. That seems like a lot of work. So what we did was we developed a feature called Pangolin Processing. Okay, so when we configure the machine for pangolin processing, we set up alignment pins in the front and the back. We tell the we tell the software that from pin to the in the front to the pins in the back, this is the length in the X. Okay, so the so the software understands what its working length and working width is. Great. Now, how can I make that work? Well, we go into the pangolin processing. And I can see, you know, I browse through all my different nests that are within my project. They're all my nests. These are all the nests that I ran. You can see them on the right-hand side. This is basically my deck. Pins in the front, pins in the back. I can double-click on a nest and lay it up in the front. I can double-click on a nest, lay it up in the back. If that's all I want to run, great. I hit OK, it will create a, a job sheet the operator what can use. So basically create, take two NC files, stitch them together, and make one job. I want to run the whole project. OK, great. Add all sheets. It automatically adds all the sheets to the project. OK, now that I've added all the sheets, I simply hit OK. It wants to know where I want to save it. And I hit save. And now what Panable does, it takes each of those nests, the individual code for each of those, and it basically stitches them together, creating one job. So what will happen is when I start the, the job, that one single job, which will encompass all these sheets, hit yes here to create my job sheets, it will automatically start in the front or the back, depending on where you lay your first sheet. So we lay the first sheet in the front. So it tells me when I start to run this job, it will run basically P1 Eric in the front, and that's the sheet that's 132 inches by 50. And then it will run P6 Eric, which is a 78 by 50 sheet in the back. So now the operator knows what sheet size he needs to load front to back going back and forth, over and over again, okay? Okay, so now he knows all that stuff. What does he do next? Well, he puts his first two sheets on the table. So he's ready to go, and he hits go. The system is basically put into automatic mode. What will happen then is that it will start cutting in the front. It will cut, and before it starts cutting, it will turn the dust collection on. It will turn the vacuum hold on, on in the front. It will drop the pins in the front. So now the sheet in the front is secured to the deck. Once that is done, now Panel Builder has told the machine what to do. It will basically cut the first sheet in the front, right? Vacuum is on, pins are down, okay? So I'm V-routing at 1,000 inches a minute. I'm profiling at 700 inches a minute. Again, I want to maximize my yield and increase my throughput. Once it finishes that first sheet, it will basically go to the end of the sheet and pause. That's a safety step. We want the operator to basically say, okay, Sheet in the back is loaded, I'm ready to go. At that point, the machine will move to the back. It will automatically turn the vacuum in the back on, the vacuum in the front off, the pins in the front will come up, and the pins in the front will go down. That allow, allows the operator now, okay, great, the machine is gonna be cutting in the back, I can work in the front, it's safe. If I want to enhance that whole safety aspect of the machine, we can include a safety system which we've done with many customers that allows it so that when the operator is engaged and working at the front of the table, the safety system in the front is off. If he happens to step into the safety zone at the back while it's cutting, the machine will stop. It's like, wait a minute, someone's in the, in the work area. I need to pause and be, make sure everybody's safe. Okay, so I can run it with or without a safety system. Again, that's something we can integrate depending on how you want, how the machine is gonna be run. So now I'm going back and forth, continually running my job. So I started out with a number of nests. Panel Builder took all those nests, and it basically made one job for me. 
I run into the machine and now my throughput is going because I'm not really basically loading a sheet. Watching it run, when it finishes, gantry goes to the back, I unload the sheet, I load another sheet. And again, for a lot of um, applications, for a lot of projects that might work. But if I really want to increase my throughput by going pendulum, when sheet one is cutting in the front, I'm loading sheet two. When I move to the back and sheet two starts cutting, I'm unloading sheet one. So the amount of downtime the machine has doesn't exist. The downtime only occurs in between sheet when it pauses to give the operator a chance to say, yes, I'm ready to go, and it moves to the next sheet. So now, yield and throughput. I set up my project in Panel Builder. I laid up my nest so that when I run the job, I will get maximum yield. So it will basically squeeze as many panels in as I possibly can. Okay, so I can, again, different layout, different nests. So first of all, I'm getting, again, maximizing my yield. All these nests are the same. It's maximizing the yield. Now, I maximize my yield. I increase my feed rate. Now I'm really increasing my throughput. I also have the system that allows it on certain situations for this particular layout, I don't get any remnants. In this particular situation, I get a remnant. I can tell the software, I can instruct the software when to generate a remnant. That way, I'm only generating remnants that I can use. So basically, Panable will only save usable offcuts that I can then release. I mean, when I say release, we tell the software, now you can use these remnants. At that point, you will add it into the available sheets, and it will basically try and or attempt to nest a panel on it. Again, depending on if you have gray and if you're allowed to rotate. So we've taken and we've looked at the full scope of what we're trying to do, throughput and yield. By going with 3 16 inch tool, quarter inch gap, 110 degree V-bit for the four lines, I can maximize my yield. Again, as you can see with any of these layouts. Okay, I don't have to worry about inside corners because my tool can get into any small inside corner because it's only 3 16ths in diameter. But again, even though I'm using a 3 16ths inch tool, I am running at 700 inches a minute. Okay, fee routing. I'm running again, 1,000 inches, and we're, and we're looking and we're working to push that to higher feed rates, again, in an effort to increase throughput. So by picking those two tools and that configuration, I can basically get more panels on a sheet, again, maximizing my yield. Increasing feed rate, I can maximize my throughput. Going with a, pen a pendulum system, now I have real, real high throughput because there's no downtime between sheets. So we've created uh, a large project here. All I've done, I'm gonna run the machine with just two sheets, the front and the back, so you can see the pendulum process in action. So we'll head over to the machine now and we'll watch that run
So job's complete. Um, run two different jobs, two different sheet sizes, same project. Uh, you can see the sheet in the front, they'll get the larger sheet than the sheet in the back. And when we go through the software, you'll get a good understanding of what this looks like on the front end in terms of setting up the job in panel builder. A uh, couple of things that we look, we're looking at when we're running jobs for us is you want to go high yield, you know, again, maximize your yield on the, the job and how fast can we cut? So you'll see the gaps between our panels are very small. They're about a quarter of an inch. That way I can get um, a 3 16 inch tool in there. I don't have to worry about, you know, pushing things close. If I had to spread them out further, you can see the panels in the front, I probably wouldn't get. I might get maybe about half of the panels for this particular job on the sheet if I had to basically open up the gap more. Um, you know, things like inside cuts by using a smaller tool, I can get closer into my corners, minimizing the secondary work in terms of cleaning up the corners when I do my folds. Um, we're running a 3 16 inch tool for doing all the profiling work, running at about 700 inches a minute. Um, we're developing some new tools. We are testing a new V-bit for doing the folds, running that at about 1,000 inches a minute right now, getting really good results on it. So a couple of things that are different. So it ran the first sheet and it finished and it basically stopped. It ran the second sheet, and when it finished cutting the job, it basically cut this off. So I have the ability within panel, within panel Builder to tell it, sometimes I want to create sheet scrapping, sometimes I don't. It all depends on what square footage is left. So it, you know, instead of having a, a cutoff line for this very small piece that I don't need, it just ignored it. But it gave me a nice rectangular piece here that I can basically put in my scrap, I mean, in my remnant pile to run later on. And again, panel builder deals with remnants. You can basically create remnants within panel builder and it will automatically call them up when it finds a remnant that will fit whatever you're gonna run next, okay? Again, the most important part about running a job, the quality of the cut. Again, I'm getting a nice clean edge, even at high feed rates. Show you the V routes. Again, that's also very clean and consistent. Again, that consistency is immensely important because when I do this, if that V route is not consistent, that will not be perfect and then it basically becomes a panel that's not usable. So even though I'm running at between 900 to 1,000 inches a minute V routing, I'm still getting good quality cuts, beautiful edges, but I'm also being able to keep my yield high even though I've increased my throughput with the new tools and the increased feed rates. Okay. That takes care of the, this part of the process. We'll look at a, another part of the process that we will run, 
where we can run straight aluminum plate. Doing a similar process, V-routing and profiling with, with similar tools, but again, I'm running a totally different material, whether it be painted aluminum or unpainted aluminum, we're able to run it on this standard system. So, I guess starting from the back of the carriage, I just want to give a quick overview of what the machine configuration looks like. And I want to look at these three units here. They are basically automatic misters that tie into each of the cutting heads. That allows the cutting heads, whenever you're cutting a, like a non-ferrous metal, like an aluminum plate for making panels, it will automatically apply coolant to the head. So, moving around to the front now, First thing we'll see right here is our automatic label printer and the applicator that comes with it. That ties into our panel tracker software, which allows you to track your panels from cut, fabricating, right to shipping. On the front of the machine is where the most important part of the system sits, my different cutting heads. The industry has evolved. Initially, it was all about cutting aluminum composite whether it be PE core or FR core, and we'll process all those different materials really well, whether it be an aluminum composite, zinc, or even copper composite. It's moved into fiber cement, high pressure laminate, um, different kinds of core, G2, corrugated aluminum core. Because of those different materials, we've, had to, we've developed other products. Fiber cement, 
basically using the saw to process those panels. We have custom tools, custom saw blades that will process that material efficiently. High pressure laminate the same. And I come to my two spindles. So depending on whether I'm cutting composite or aluminum, probably a V-bit for doing the composite. We have custom tools, 110, 100 degrees, 130 degrees, depending on how you want to run your process. When we come to something as an aluminum plate, we'll be using a ball nose tool that gives us the most optimum process in terms of speed and cut quality. And then our cutout head. Whether I'm using a 316 for profiling my composite or my aluminum plate or a 3 8 for running my high pressure laminate or fiber cement, I have the ability to tie this head now into my automatic tool change that gives me 10 positions. So I can have 10 different tools for doing my cutouts. So the system as it stands, I have the flexibility from going from standard aluminum composite to aluminum plate, jumping over to fiber cement, high pressure laminate, all in one platform so that the process is clean and smooth and it's not complicated transitioning from one material or one job or one project to the next.